Today I want to talk about how the shorts are due to make a massive mistake. I want to explain how the shorts aren't actually perfect and do often make mistakes, and how their next mistake will cause the empty squeeze. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So Crystal Ball tweeted saying it's interesting how Citadel, the top two pictures, and Virtue, the bottom two pictures, have taken opposite positions on the current market. He said Virtue is lowering their S&P 500 call exposure and adding puts, while Citadel is actually doing the exact opposite, adding S&P 500 calls and selling off their puts. Even market makers can't predict it all. Now you can see that Citadel have significantly more put options than call options at 64 million to 38 million. They're selling off 10 million of those puts and adding 8 million calls. So they're going from having almost double the amount of call options in put options to only around 25% more puts than calls. Now on the other hand, Virtue also have more puts than calls, around 32 million to 19 million, but they've actually added 5 million puts and reduced their calls by around a million. Virtue on the other hand are going from having around 50% more put options to now having nearly double the amount of put options. So you can see that at the end of the day, one of these hedge funds and market makers has made a mistake. Whether it's Citadel making the mistake or Virtue, we're yet to see. But what this does show is that actually these shorts and these market makers do actually make mistakes and quite significant mistakes as well. Virtue's position is worth around $12 billion in those puts. And Citadel, on the other hand, has around $24 billion in those puts and around $15 billion in those calls. Now obviously that isn't small fry investing into growth stocks, that's a giant portion of their position where Citadel and Virtue have two complete opposite ideas. And as Sticks tweeted, he said after we ran to $32 in March, it took around 5 months to August for AMC to break out again. He said AMC is a stubborn stock because, oh that's right, they literally can't afford for AMC to break out to all time highs and beyond. Right now these shorts can't afford to make another mistake with AMC, letting it run again like they did back in March and like they did back in June of last year. Well, yes, they pushed us down back in March, they pushed us down recently in August, and they pushed us down beforehand back in June of last year, but this time maybe their downfall. Each time AMC runs, it is due to these hedge funds and these market makers making a mistake. So far, these hedge funds have managed to catch AMC before the squeeze, able to short it back down. But this time around, I don't think they'll be able to catch AMC before it squeezes because of how close they are to a margin call. I believe the next time AMC runs over $30 per share, it will practically instantaneously cause the squeeze, as these hedge funds will be too close to a margin call and will be liquidated. That's why a stick said they literally can't afford to make any more mistakes and allow this to break out to all-time highs and beyond. And as Avi tweeted, he said AMC's days to cover just went from 5.29 days to 6.04, and utilization remains at 100% since February. And in quarter four of 2022, AK, the coming next few months, AMC is projected to be net positive cash flowing. And he said any major short covering or any major mistakes will send this squeezing. Now something that's also very interesting is Avi pointing out the ape short data not making any sense. On AMC, we have 104 million shares shorted, but yet with Ape, we only have 39.3 million shares. That's obviously a significantly smaller short position, considering that Ape has dropped more dramatically than AMC over the last month or two. For Ape to experience such a significant drop, one would expect the Ape short interest should actually be significantly higher. And on top of that, the Ape dividend should have been a one-to-one -one share issue, a one-to-one -one share dividend of AMC, aka the short positions should have been perfectly replicated. This therefore suggests the shorts have closed out and bought back over 65 million shares, but if they've bought over 65 million shares, how has the Ape price dropped so dramatically? And on top of that, Rico has just reported the institutional long positions on AMC and Ape. Institutions are holding 149 million shares of AMC, but yet only 185,000 Ape. Now again, this makes zero sense. Ape was a one-for-one -one share issue for AMC, and therefore institutions should be holding 149 million Ape shares, but they're only holding 185,000. Now you may say, Tom, what happened to the 149 million Ape shares? Well, it sounds like to me these institutions weren't given real AMC shares, 
most likely because computers sharing the DTC distributed them all to us. These institutions only received fake fraudulent synthetic IOUs and didn't actually receive real ape shares and potentially still haven't received their ape. And on top of that, a number of hedge funds like Doug Sifu at Virtue said they were going to take advantage of the arbitrage opportunity by buying ape shares and shorting AMC because the prices should be the same. They said that actually they're going to go into the market and buy more ape shares. Therefore, they should reporting not just 149 million, but potentially 200 or 300 million ape. But yet they're only reporting 185,000 shares, likely because the float is held many times over. It's likely they haven't yet had enough time to create enough synthetic shares to distribute to these institutions and to us, so instead they've issued tons of fraudulent, fake synthetic IOUs. These institutions obviously haven't yet received their real shares or their synthetic shares, they've only received these IOUs which they obviously don't report. So it seems like these hedge funds and market makers may have actually made a mistake with APE, as obviously the APE reported data makes no sense whatsoever. The institutions should be holding significantly more shares and the institutions should also be shorting significantly more ape shares as well. This data appears completely out of whack and it may be these hedge funds have again made a mistake, they've slipped up and it may soon come to light. This could potentially cause another run up in the AMC stock which as I said will likely cause the squeeze. And on top of that, in some of my previous videos I spoke about Adam Aaron redeeming these callable bonds on November 7th. Adam Aaron could potentially sell off these 400 million additional ape shares to raise tons and tons of cash so he can buy back the currently shorted AMC bonds. These bonds can be redeemed as of November 7th, therefore Adam Aaron may sell the ape shares on November 7th, buying back all of these bonds. And as Spence tweeted, he said you could see short covering on AMC shortly after. Now that also makes a lot of sense in relation to the AMC quarter three announcement earnings. The AMC announcement earnings will be made after the market closes on Tuesday, November 8th. This therefore gives Adam Aaron time to sell these 400 million new Ape shares, buy back all of these callable bonds on the 7th of November and report the earnings a day later. And this is a perfect opportunity for Adam Aaron's pounce and the timeline all makes sense. Longview Economics also tweeted saying the S&P 500 traded up to its 50 day moving average yesterday before giving back some gains later in the session. They said most of our short term models are now convincingly on sell. The black dotted line follows the S&P 500 and the red line follows the proportion of US stocks above their 10 day moving average. When the market is bottoming out, this red line also bottoms out because barely any stocks are above their 10 day moving average as they've been recently crashing. But as this red line moves higher up to the very tippy top where it is now, that's because 90% of all stocks are above their 10 day moving average and have been rocketing up as of late. To Longview Economics, that suggests a convincing sell position as they think the S&P 500 has overdone its recent gains and is due for another crash, potentially wiping out the previous low. Close. They're basically saying the last week has been a bull trap for the S&P 500 and it's likely to continue falling over the next few weeks. Again this also puts more pressure on these shorts not to make a mistake as they're going to be closer and closer to a margin call over the next few weeks if the S&P 500 continues dropping. An unusual ape tweeted saying it's crazy how pension funds and 401ks are being affected negatively because of all the short sellers. He said they're literally using other people's money to gamble and make bad bets and yet the SEC is always on the sidelines just watching it unfold. He said it's beyond nuts at this point and the system is indeed totally corrupt. It's crazy how all of these pension funds have no idea actually what's happening to their money when they invest in these hedge funds and these same hedge funds take over leveraged risky bets. These over leveraged risky bets have not been paying off on their long positions as over the last 10 months and they've also not been paying off on their short positions either. These hedge funds are getting closer and closer to a margin call as they're not making money on their shorts, they're obviously having to pay to maintain their shorts and they're no longer making money on their longs, actually they're losing significant amounts of money. And that is exactly why these shorts are so close to making a mistake. They're losing money every single day on their long positions, especially when the S&P 500 turns back around and continues to set new lows. Literally the only thing keeping them alive at the moment is this money coming from these pension funds and from regular people's 401ks like you and I.
and therefore it won't be long until we see AMC squeeze. Over the last year and a half, we've seen AMC fall from $70 per share down to where it is now, but really over the last few months or over the last year, it's practically traded flat. Yes, AMC bounces around from $8 down to $6, potentially back up to $10 and then back down to six or seven, but realistically those are very small movements since the fall from $70. Therefore, we will continue trading sideways until the shorts make a mistake. These shorts aren't making more money because AMC is practically flat and they will make a mistake causing the squeeze. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.